G'day YouTube and welcome back to the ASX Portfolio channel. My name's Jonathan. So today we're gonna to be talking about the profitability of market makers and quants when they go about dynamically hedging option positions. We're also going to compare this to the distributions of statically um, hedging positions and also not delta hedging positions at all. So what is delta hedging? Delta hedging is where you transact in the bank account and the underlying to hedge some of the directional risk that you have while holding your options. Now, for anyone who intimately knows the option pricing uh, methodology and formulation, this portfolio replication is actually the basis of how to price options. So how can we go about actually hedging this risk? Well, essentially we're going to enter into an option position. From that, we're going to be able to calculate our delta. There we're going to be uh, actually transacting in the underlying, either buying or selling, depending on our delta, our exposure to the underlying. From making those adjustments, those adjustments accumulated up are going to make the difference um, of, of actually hedging some of that directional risk. So if you're long an options position, we're going to actually be buying when prices are lower and selling when prices are higher. That's what every good trader wants to do. In, con in contrast, when we're short an option position, well then we're actually gonna be doing the opposite. We're going to be buying when prices go higher and selling when prices go lower. So by doing this intermittently throughout the life of the option, we're able to try and converge upon the theoretical pricing of that option. Now, one thing that we're gonna go through, and I can't stress it enough, is that option traders are so dependent on realized volatility. So if you get realized volatility wrong, you can end up losing money or making a lot of money. So realized volatility is the most important formula when you are transacting in options. So for this real world example, we're gonna be using Commonwealth Bank of Australia, and we're gonna be looking at at the money options. So right now the underline's at $202. We're gonna be looking at the strike, $202 then for the November, uh, 18th of November expiry. So the November um, options. So we're going to be looking at the calls and the puts, and then where the market maker has obviously got the bid and the ass there. So by actually looking at the implied volatility of those two products, we can see that the, for the calls, the bid is at, so where we can actually sell to the market maker, that implied volatility is low at about 12 to 13%. Now the actual ask, so where we can actually buy these call uh, options from, is around 16%. Now, if we look at historical volatility and the volatility right now in the marketplace for CBA, we can see that that comes in at about 14%. So there is no coincidence that the calls here by the market maker are being sold around that level um, for the call uh, options. Now, in contrast for the puts, they're actually able to demand a much higher return um, or implied volatility for the puts because of the supply and demand in the marketplace. So there must be very high demand for put options at that level at the moment. So because of that, they're able to sell at about 29% implied volatility. So that's where the ask is. If we wanna to sell to them, well then that's an implied volatility of around 26%. So now we're going to look at a specific example of how we could delta hedge depending on what the underlying is doing. Now we're going to look at the total adjustments and then the interest on those adjustments. So let's take a look at this table. So for the short call, we're going to short the November 102 calls and we're gonna receive the premium, the bid price of $2.00. Uh, 585. Now remember contract multiplier is 100, so one call option controls 100 shares of the underlying, so that's 100 times that, that premium. Now the delta calculated there for that option is 54, but we're short the call option, so we're negative 54 delta. So to uh, become delta neutral, we actually need to buy back as soon as we uh, sell the call 54 shares in the underlying at the price $102. Now every week for the next 11 weeks, we're going to come into the marketplace, see the price. So next week it's $101.60. So we calculate the delta. We look at the change in that delta position. We've got a plus three delta. So we actually need to hedge that and sell three contracts in the underlying. 
We keep doing this week after week. Next week it's 102.5, uh, so the price has gone up. So our delta is now short. We need to go uh, adjust that by buying six contracts and so on and so forth. Now we keep tabs of this every week and by the final week, um, we calculate our long position, which is 30 overall in week 10. We sell our 30 stocks in the last week. So now we can consider the entire PNL of this option position with dynamic hedging by considering the components on the right hand side. So for the original option PNL, remember we have a contract multiplier of 100. So it's 100 times by the premium minus the difference between the total, the end price and the strike. So that's $189.50. So now remember that we get that premium up front, so we get to earn interest on the option. So you can calculate that using this formula here and get a dollar and seven cents and on the interest on that premium. So now remember we had to buy 54 stocks at the very beginning and we actually end up making a uh, total return of $37.26 on that original stock purchase. The uh, reason we were able to buy that stock is because we borrowed money from the money market and the interest we have to pay back on that is negative $22.90. Now for the adjustment cash flow, all you need to do is add up that column there that you can see and the same thing for the interest on the adjustments, which totals um, 37 cents on the right hand side. So by taking into consideration all of these components, you get a total cash flow of $110.70. Now it's really important to understand that this is only one scenario that I've showed you. Now the importance and significance of that cannot be understated. So this is probably the most important thing in all this option theory, is that you are going to Delta Hedge, but your performance is completely based off realized volatility and where realized volatility comes in. If realized volatility is low and you've bought and you've bought high implied volatility, well then you're going to lose money. If you have bought low implied volatility and realized volatility comes in high, well then you are going to make money. And really this is such a key idea of options trading. Now let's show you some proof by actually modeling the underlying. We're going to take 1000 simulations and we're going to look at these different um, scenarios. One where we've dynamically delta hedged, one where we've statically delta hedged and then one where we don't delta hedge at all. We're gonna look at those options, um, profit and loss distributions and we're going to kind of decide why that is the case. So let's consider a long put. So with a realized volatility of 50% and we're gonna to have to hit the ask, which is an implied volatility of about 30%. So we can see from the dynamic uh, delta hedging distribution there that we've got a mean of $370 with an upside P95 of 770. Now the static uh, delta hedging, which only happens once, we have a much larger upside, but we can see that P5 on the downside, uh, minus 486. Now that's a lot worse than that minus $20 uh, in the dynamic delta hedging side. Now, in contrast, the no delta hedging has a much worse P5 um, outcome. Uh, roughly uh, just a lower mean and then the P95 uh, much larger upside. So hopefully you can see there the differences between the strategies, but the dynamic delta hedging is really trying to converge um, uh, and get that distribution as accurately as possible to that theoretical option pricing. So now we're gonna consider if we've bought implied volatility at 30%, what happens if realized volatility underperforms at 15%? Well, obviously we've, we've bought high and we've realized low, so we're gonna lose money. So you can see the dynamic delta hedging probability distribution there has a mean loss of minus $274. Now it's still pretty tight bounds. If you now consider what happens if we only hedged when we entered the position with a static delta hedge, then we have much worse uh, downside at that P5 level. And again, it is similar when you consider no delta hedging at all. Remember, this is a thousand scenarios, so then you're gonna have a wider distribution of outcomes with no hedging whatsoever. So you, as you can see, we've got that minus $532 for the P5, but we do have a potential upside of $506 with no delta hedging. Hopefully you guys got a lot out of that video and you really understand um, what dynamic hedging is and that you make adjustments in the underlying periodically to hedge some of that directional risk. 
Also, hopefully it makes sense the importance um, of realized volatility in comparison to where the market maker is offering these products to you. The more accurate anyone, your retail investor or the market maker can actually forecast realized volatility, the better pricing they can have in terms of fairer prices for the marketplaces and um, opportunistic trading for retail traders. So if you wanna stay tuned and you wanna follow us over the next two months while we do this uh, Optiva Realized Volatility Challenge, feel free to subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time.